Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. I hope you guys are all having a beautiful day today, and I hope that you're ready to put on some makeup. We have the newest collection from Kiko Milano. This is their Tuscan Sunshine line, and I could not be more excited to test this out. Um, I originally saw it, I want to say, over on the Ulta website, so anything that is available at Ulta, I will link down below, but ultimately for me, I ended up purchasing everything off of their website, the Kiko Milano website, so I will probably link it down there as well, you know, as long as it's still available on their site and uh, I went through them just because it, they had a huge sale I think I got it like 25 or 30 percent off or something like that so obviously it made more sense for me to buy it from their site but like I said I will link both down below that way you guys have the choice you know just in case there's a sale on the Kiko website or if you want to use your Alta points or earn Alta points that sort of thing I'll link both and uh, you guys can kind of click around from there the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and get started with in this collection is of course the foundation because there was no primer that launched with it so I already primed off of camera I just just use a little bit of my liquid Tatcha Soak canvas just to let it soak into the skin. And from there, we're gonna start by unboxing this. We're gonna zoom the camera in and get to the application. Well, hello, beautiful people. Editing page here. Um, I wanted to stop in and talk to you guys for just a second because as you know, things have been a little bit crazy as of recent in my world, my realm, and it has disrupted my upload schedule. So I'm gonna be popping in throughout this video to give you guys some updates because I actually filmed this video, I wanna say, probably two or three weeks ago at this point because it was it was supposed to go up yeah it was supposed to go up two weeks ago so I filmed it three weeks ago and um I, I just wanted to let you guys know some updates on some of the products because truthfully I have used a, a fair amount of these you know several times at this point and there's just a couple of things I want to touch on so I'll probably just wait and interject them you know as I'm trying them on in the video that way you can see them applied and then I'll kind of pop in if I have anything else that I want to add and um yeah I just wanted to give you guys a heads up I'm gonna be stopping by so be on your best behavior and uh you know <laughs> I'll be around okay so the first thing we need to talk about before we get into the actual foundation you guys look at how cute this unicarton is like am I the only person I just I absolutely love the presentation of this I haven't taken anything out of the boxes I haven't opened anything and I just think that the way that they are presenting this entire line is so cute like everything in here just looks like it's an actual painting again this is the Tuscan sunshine luminous foundation and I have it in the shade 01 and here is the component also very cute I wanted to take just a real quick second and look this up on their website just so I could read some more about it and it currently has 10 reviews all of them are five stars and it says that this is a moisturizing liquid foundation with buildable medium coverage it retails for $22 and it is ideal for giving the face an even and radiant complexion in one simple step also this is available in a wide range of eight shades say that with me eight shades. Okay, I just wanna, would wanna reiterate that in case anybody didn't hear me. Eight shades, and uh, the color range itself is absolutely abysmal. And I know sometimes people make the claim that it's because, you know, the, the brand itself is from this country or that country, and I don't even get into any of that. It's just my job to sit here and tell you, y'all, the shade range, it ain't good, okay? It's not It's not a good shade range. And I don't really go much deeper than that because to me, that's just, that's just what it is. But anyways, back to this. I have it in the shade one, which is the lightest shade in the collection. And this is an incredibly, incredibly runny thin formula. So something to keep in mind. To start off, I'm gonna be applying this with a sponge. This is my dose of color sponge. And I'm gonna start off by just, you know, Papping it into the skin a little bit. I'm just mainly focused on uh, trying to get anywhere near a medium coverage out of this because as of right now, <laughs> I'm not seeing it, guys. I'm just, I'm truly not seeing it. Um, this looks more like a skin tint than anything else. Like, is there even a difference other than I just made this side of my face even pastier than I already was? No. So we're going to try this a little differently here. I'm still going to go in with the foundation on the back of my hand, but to apply it, I'm going to go in here with my Fenty foundation brush. This is my favorite foundation brush that I have in my collection. I think it's amazing. Um, this foundation is buildable where to what for who? <laughs> because I... Uh, where? I'm, I'm sorry, but what coverage? Like, I'm, I must be really genuinely confused here. Also, this foundation with a brush, guys, I'm gonna be honest, not that great. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. Now that I have went in this much and uh, tried to work with this foundation, even though this is, of course, you know, a first impression on it, whatnot, I can tell you a few things with a fair amount of certainty. Number one, the coverage on this. Don't even look at this and dream of medium. I want you to think of medium as a fall 
far, far, far off distant relative to this foundation because truth be told, this has about as much coverage as a skin tint does, at least in my opinion. Okay, okay, so here's the deal, guys. <laughs> Let me just tell you, watching this footage is just painful because I... I told myself, right? I told myself I wasn't going to try this foundation again. Like, I'm not doing this. I am not going to put myself through this foundation again. And yet I did. It was a horrible decision. I do not like this stuff. It, like, no matter what I use it with, no matter what powder, no matter how I try to work this, I even tried using it as a mixer. Don't like it. It doesn't work well with my skin. And for some reason, it just, like, it, it's almost like it. my skin is very aggravated by it. And I didn't look through the ingredients or anything, so I have no idea if that's what it is. But for whatever reason, this foundation does not work for me. Um, I just, like, absolutely not. Um, and not only that, but I look like Casper, especially when, you know, I go through and I, I apply it with the next couple of products. Like, oh my God, it's just is not a good look. So for me, this is a big old no on every level. And I'm going to be using the Pat McGrath concealer. This is the uh, L1 uh, Skin Fetish Sublime Concealer. And then really quickly after the concealer, I'm just going in with a little bit of my Maybelline Fit Me here. This is in the shade 05 Fair. And I'm using this to lightly set down my T-zone before I go in with a new product and set the rest of my face. And for that, we're going to be checking out this new Kiko Milano Tuscan Sunshine Perfecting Powder. And on their website, it says that this is $18 and that this is a perfecting powder with fixing and highlighting properties. It is ideal for enhancing your skin and achieving a radiant but natural finish. And it is a sheer ultralight texture that suits every skin tone. It is both silky and weightless. And it has an innovative formula with illuminating particles that make skin appear flawless, reduces blemishes, and helps make makeup last longer. Oh my God, you guys, I love this packaging so much. Oh my God, that's gorgeous. This is almost like an orange coral like duochrome color and then it has the flower um, like stamped into it in silver. Oh, I love this. This is so gorgeous. Okay, so let's go ahead here. Take a little look at the powder, which is very white. Oh boy, is that white. Oh, but it has a cute little design stamped in it. Can you guys see that? Now, really quickly, I just took the last few minutes and I did do a little bit of a uh, flash test on this. So I applied a patch of it to the back of my hand and this definitely does have flashback. So something to keep in mind if you're interested in flash photography or, you know, you're gonna be taking photos anything like that just you know be mindful of that but uh, for me for today that's probably not gonna have any bearing on my life so I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna dive in with a fluffy brush this is my flower beauty fluffy brush just very lightly buff it in I, I have a lot of familiarity with setting powders it's one of my favorite steps of my makeup routine and as such I do test out a lot of stuff like this whether it's a finishing powder a regular setting powder a pressed powder whatever I love testing out stuff like this and um, I, I can tell you just based Based off of again you know my experience and how my skin is I can only speak for myself but for me a powder like this wouldn't really work that great as an all-over setting powder um, just because it's so finely milled that it's not gonna be the type of powder that can really carry me through the day and really reinforce my foundation like I need a foundation and a powder that really work together to lock into my skin and just really you know stay strong all day long type thing and this isn't that kind of a powder for me it's more of a finishing powder but that being being said, it did apply very nicely and it has a very, and I mean a very, very silky smooth texture to it. Okay, so at first with this one, I wasn't, you know, too deterred by like the white cast and I couldn't see it in my monitor at the time, but like looking back on the footage, there definitely is very much so like a, a white cast on my face or flashback, if you will, um, which isn't uncommon because I, I do have several lights bouncing back off of me. And, you know, I, I wasn't bothered by that so much, but uh, my biggest issue with this powder and I even tried using it this morning when I did my makeup um my biggest issue with it is the mill for some reason it doesn't get along with a lot of my other powders and I can't quite figure it out because truthfully like I love the mill the consistency of it is very nice and as I said in the video you know this isn't something that I would want to use to set my makeup but I don't see any reason that it wouldn't like work as a finishing powder to buff everything out but for some reason I, this one just does not work for me like I've tried using it multiple times and no matter what the application is I just can't make it work for me it's almost like all I get from this powder is <laughs> the flashback I don't get anything else I don't get the smoothing I don't get the you know like the refinement factor I'm not I'm not really able to get anything else from it so for me this one's a pass too 
from here, let's go ahead for the absolute love of God and add some sunshine to my face. And for that, we're gonna use bronzer because guys, I'm literally starting to glow. Like <laughs> I look like a light bulb. So let's go ahead and talk about this. This is their Radiant Bronzer. It looks like it is available in two shades. I have the shade 01 Sweet Honey. And it says that this is a silky satin finish bronzer with a lily scent. And it is ideal for adding warmth to the face and enhancing the features in every season with a radiant sun-kissed effect. And also, I forgot to mention, this retails for $18. Forgot to mention that, uh, but let's go ahead and dig in. So it is the exact same like outer packaging right here, the same component as before, which again, I'm not mad at. I like that cohesion, and I think this is a really, really cute package. And this is what the actual bronzer itself looks like. I actually... I kind of like that color. I think that that'll work just fine. I really, really enjoy the radiance of this. The only thing that's making me a little bit apprehensive is I feel like after swatching it, that it has almost like a yellowy kind of base to it. So we're gonna see, we're gonna, you know, obviously hold out hope and all that. Now, next up, obviously, we're just gonna go ahead and apply it. And for that, I'm gonna be using the Sigma Large Powder Brush. This is their F30. And I'm just gonna dunk this in. I'm using this one because it has a much wider base to it. And I think it'll help me really diffuse the product. Okay, so here's the deal. I really wanted to make sure with this bronzer that I worked it into my skin because the foundation and everything else is on the lighter side of coverage. So I just want to make sure that all of my other products then kind of follow suit. And after playing with this a little bit, I actually think that I like the tone of this, which I was not expecting, but I think that the undertone really works because as I'm buffing it in, it looks like a very, very natural bronzy shade for my skin tone. From here, it's time to go ahead and move on to blush. I picked up two shades. They do have three available, and these also retail for $18 a piece, just like the bronzer, and it says that these are a two-toned blend effect blush with a satin finish and an iris scent, and they are ideal for revitalizing your complexion and creating touches of light and volume, enhancing your features. Ooh, that sounds so nice. That sounds so fancy. So guys, can we just talk about the packaging one more time? Because again, I'm, I'm just this person. They did such a good job with the coloring. They made the blushes more of like a pink leaning yellow duochrome, whereas the other ones had like that orange coral duochrome. And the packages themselves actually match like the outer casings and the unicartons and stuff. Oh my God, it's so good. But packaging aside, let's go ahead and focus on the actual blushes themselves. These are the two shades that I bought. I have O2 Tuscan Iris, which is the deeper shade. And then the lighter one here is O1 Florence Dream. And this blush right here is the whole reason that I picked up this entire collection. Like this for me was a hundred shades of just like, oh my God, yes, please. Like I need you, please come home with me. Please be my friend, be my blush, be my buddy. I just needed it in my life. All right, so here's the deal guys. I'm sitting here and I'm really trying like desperately to swatch this blush for you, but it's so hard to see on camera. So the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm swatching just this side, and then I'm gonna swatch the two sides together just so you can see the difference. And I'm really hoping that it'll show up if I do it enough. Okay, that looks a lot better. Okay, so this is just that one shade, the shade 01. And right here, it's a little bit more pinky. And then over here is the two mixed together. So this is the coral side by itself. This is if you were to just, you know, go right in the center of the pan. I actually like the fact that you can get two very different colors. They're both very light, but they are both different. I think if you stick with just this side, you get more of a pinky toned. But then if you go to this side and like mix the two together, a little more, you actually are able to get something closer to like a coral tone, which is really pretty. So let's go ahead really quickly and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just using my other hand, doing a good swatch. And this one, because it is a little bit uh, darker, it should show up. <gasps> oh, that's a beautiful color. Oh my God. So this is again, the darker shade by itself. And then if you mix both sides together, <gasps> oh, okay. Those are both really, really beautiful. And I like this side a lot more than I thought I would. Now to go in and apply these, I found two brushes that are almost identical. They're both from It Cosmetics. This is the Chic Blush Brush and this is their Flawless Blush Brush. They're both pretty similar as far as density, size, you know, fluff, all of that. We're gonna get started with the lighter shade and go in on this side. And I'm, oh wow, I just got a ton of kick in there. Uh, but I'm gonna go in and mix the two shades together. And I'm just gonna take this and lightly pounce it on this side, being very careful because I don't want to lift up any coverage that I do have. 
but I want to be able to still get like that nice flush to the cheek. So the color is gorgeous. It's a very, very, very light toned shade. So again, definitely something to keep in mind, manage your expectations, but I really do like it. I think it's a nice light kind of vibe. I find myself leaning more on the deeper side of the, um, of the compact more so than in the middle, just so that way I can actually get some color, but it's actually really, really pretty. On the other side, let's go ahead. We're going to grab the other brush here and we're going to go in with this shade. I'm going to start off just like I did with that side and kind of kick right in the middle here and just lightly apply. Oh, wow. Can you see the difference? Like just as far as the depth of color, I swiped on a teeny tiny bit onto this side and my face already, like it has more than enough blush on it. And this side to get a very similar amount, I applied it probably three times. Now really quickly, just to match up the sides and um, even out the face, I am gonna take some of both blushes and apply it to both sides. Hell guys, who are we kidding? I like both of those sides mixed together, right? Like they look beautiful. Okay, so that hand got tired. We had to take a break, <laughs> you know, switch over here. Um, but really quickly, I wanted to stop on and I'm actually pairing the bronzer and the blush update in one together because for me, I feel like they were very similar in a lot of ways. And it's something that I do keep touching on with a lot of these products that they do have more of a sheer pigmentation. And I feel like that's a very um, consistent theme throughout this collection. And I'm not mad at that. Again, I, I think even now as I go back through and give my thoughts, like I don't have an issue with things having a lighter pigmentation, especially if you can tell that that's how like the items are geared. Um, but I will say, you know, I noticed as I went back through and I started using like the bronzer and the blush on other days with cream products, so on and so forth, I noticed that I do prefer the bronzers and the blushes over top of cream products because it does help to give them more of um more of a pigmented base to go on top of. And I think if it's me, that's kind of what I would stick with for using them, especially with the bronzer because it does have more of a like a orangey or a yellowy kind of undertone. Um, and then when it comes to the blushes, I don't have an issue with them so much, especially with them being lighter. But of the two, my main issue is that I, I, the pigmentation on the lighter one is so light to the point that I find it difficult to build up and get any use out of it by itself. So that one is almost more of a luminous blush topper, but the darker shade is really, really beautiful. And I, I have liked that one several times by itself or paired with other things. We are going to drift really quickly into the eyes. And for that, obviously, first things first here, I want to do my brows. Now they didn't release a brow item with this collection, which is totally fine. So I'm gonna go in with two products that I use all the time. They are both from Benefit. Um, um, the first one was not sent to me. I did buy this myself. This is their Benefit Brow Styler, and I have this in the shade four. And then to top everything off, I'll go in with the Benefit Gimme Brow. All right, guys, I'm back. Brows are done, and it's time to go ahead and shift over into eyeshadow. And for eyeshadow in this collection, they only offered two little palettes, which I'm okay with. Honestly, I feel like the market for eyeshadow palettes is super oversaturated. So I'm okay with seeing a couple options that are smaller and more curated for a collection. So with that being said, I did go ahead and pick up one of the two palettes and this also retails for $18 and I got it in the shade or the, the set rather 01 Tuscan Escape. This right here is what the palette looks like. It's just a standard cardboard packaging. It's nothing too, you know, fancy, nothing too crazy, no mirror, nothing like that. And uh, the shades inside are four matte shades and then two more metallic shades. Let's just talk about it. Are these not two of the most stunning metallic shades you've ever seen? Like I feel like on camera you can't even see see the other matte shades. There's three here and one up here. You can't even see those because you're just blinded by all of this metallic goodness. So to get this eye look started, I'm just going in first and priming with a little bit of the Hourglass. What is this? Their Veil Eye Primer. I'm still testing it out. And to go ahead and get that base good and set down, I'm going to reach into the palette and grab the shade David right here. It's just a very light bone colored shade. And I'm going to take that on my Kaleidos S1 brush here. I'm just going to sweep that color all over the lid as well as through the crease just to get it good and set down. From there with the same brush, I'm going to grab a little bit of this lighter coral and this is going to be my crease color that I'm going to start working through. This is the shade Renaissance. 
and I'm just gonna sweep that all the way through and I have a feeling yeah it's definitely on the lighter side so I'm gonna have to build it up a little bit next up I'm going in here and I'm just adding some of the second shade in this is Florence right here the lighter brown shade and I'm taking it on the same brush obviously and I'm just um, placing that one on the outer V and kind of lightly deepening everything up and I think based on how light in pigment this shade is, like it's definitely not a very strong shade. I think in terms of eyeshadow palettes, like this isn't the type of pigmentation I would normally go for. Um, normally I feel like in with eyeshadow palettes, you know, we're kind of trained and, and honed in on wanting like the most rich in pigment and the most payoff and all of that. And I feel like this palette is definitely not that palette. Like if you're looking for, you know, the super rich in payoff and all of that, this is not gonna be your jam because I'm finding that these shades, you know, the, the more that I build them and kind of buff them in, these are definitely lighter pigment kind of shades that you really have to work with if you want to build um, like any sort of a depth to go with them. I'm going to take some of this gold metallic right here and I'm just going to lightly kind of throw that all the way up the center of the lid and I'm applying this one pretty lightly and then I'm just going to ever so gently build it right up the center just because this shade does have the ability to be much more potent. Okay, so really quickly, I just want to interject this um, about the palette because here's the situation. I still really like the shimmers. I think they're beautiful. But for me, I don't think that this eyeshadow palette is worth the purchase. And I keep going back and forth on it because like I've said with everything else, I'm not upset about the lighter pigmentation, but I do get upset when A, it's not consistent from like one shade to the next. And I really feel like that's the problem I have with this palette because when I go in with the lighter couple of shades that are in it, it works fine. Like I don't, you know, I don't have anything huge to complain about there but for me the deeper shade like that deep dark I think it's like a very dark brown I want to say that shade for me is very difficult to use I tried it today and it was very patchy it blended out weird but then I tried it last week and it was just fine and I was using the exact same base for both shades so I don't know why it's that inconsistent like why it would be so drastically off from one shade to the next um, and then even one more step than that, it kind of bothered me too, because I, I was using this the other day and I was trying to create just a light look. And that's when it occurred to me that it's very weird that they would put mattes in here that are very light in pigmentation, but then have the metallics or like the, the shimmers be that far overboard, like, and have that much power to them. Like to, to me, there's just a little bit of an imbalance. You know, if you're wanting a lighter palette with a lighter type matte and a lighter pigmentation, I would think the shimmers would follow suit to that and also be on on the lighter side um but for me like it, it, again it's a nice palette I don't hate the color story but like truth be told it's nothing I would reach for just you know just to reach for it like it, it's not something that I'm like oh I should use that and I think with how much makeup there is in the world right now like if you don't feel that you know if you don't feel that kind of way towards something it's kind of everything you need to know again at least in my opinion so for me I just the pal the palette is a pass and I, I was really hesitant on that but the more that I think about it I watched it perform here I watched it again this morning and just it's yeah you just you don't need it again my opinion no all right so now that the eyes are done it's time to move on to highlight then mascara lips finish everything up and before I go in with highlight I always like to be very consistent and I spray my face a couple of times just to let everything sink into the skin and for that for today I'm gonna grab my NYX bear with me spray I'm just gonna throw a couple of spurts on here and while that's sinking into the skin, we're going to go ahead and talk about the face palette that I picked up. And that is this little guy right here. Retails for $22. And it is a face palette that comes with two highlighters and two multi-finish blushes. So these two down here are both of the highlight shades. And then both of these up here are the blushes. So I think first I want to go in with this shade right here. I was going to go in with the more goldy one, but I feel like of the two, I just, well, you know what? Maybe we will try both. I just feel like on my hand, the gold one looks a little bit too deep for me but you know at the very least we, we have to test it out we have to see so I'm gonna grab my elf brush this is the jelly pop stipple brush here and I'm gonna go in with this shade and this one also does have um, a decent amount of kick and pan a lot of fallout so just like with the blushes kind of be mindful when you're digging in because it will it will go all over all right so this highlight is absolutely beautiful again this is just the one shade but that is a 
gorgeous highlight. Oh my god. It's definitely not like your subtle kind of highlight. This is like a hello high in your face kind of highlight. And I am here for her. Yes, I am. So on the other side, let's go ahead and go in with the gold shade in here. I'm just going to take the same brush. And dear God, did that fall out? Just get the best of me again. Like it just got all over my pants. That is just lovely. I'm going to be sparkling like a fairy in no time. Oh, that side's beautiful too. I have to hold this at like the most awkward angle so you guys, so I can see that you guys are seeing, so I can see that you guys are seeing what you need to see. Wow. Overall, I actually think that that's a really beautiful compilation of shades. I like both of the highlights and I really look forward to using those blushes because those are gorgeous. Like even, even just the matte blush by itself is a really beautiful color. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and set my face down the rest of the way. This is just kind of my process when I get done with my makeup. Before I go in with mascara, I like to hit my face with a few other sprays. So first up, the Urban Decay All Nighter, just a little bit, just to lock it in. And then over top of that, I'm gonna go in with some of my um, Dewy Glow Setting Spray. This is from Catrice. And then again, while that's, you know, soaking into the skin, letting everything dry down, let's talk about our options for mascara because I do have two different options. I have the three-in-one mascara and then I have the primer mascara. So I figured we could kind of test both out. Now, the first one we're gonna talk about is obviously the primer mascara. This retails for $10 and it says that this is a primer mascara for defined lashes with a lengthening effect. And it is ideal for being used as a base on the lashes and providing a great volume enhancing effect when combined with a black Kiko mascara. And then the other mascara, which is the three in one mascara that retails for $16. It says that this mascara is ideal for achieving up to three different effects using one product, whether it is a volume enhancing effect, a curving and lengthening effect, or a panoramic look effect with the combination of both sides. All right guys, so I'm back and I've been off playing with these uh, two different mascaras situations here for like 10-ish minutes, just really trying to work with them. And I think of the two, shockingly enough, I do prefer the uh, the primer one to the regular mascara, just because I feel like the primer one really does what it says it's going to do. I feel like it does a nice job really defining and lengthening your mascara. And then moving into the mascara, my biggest thing was kind of like a back and forth feeling because I do like the volume side of this over the lengthening and the curling side. I feel like like the uh, voluminous side really did give you a darker, more slightly clumped together lash. Ultimately for me, this mascara, I, I would say is more for somebody that wants like the longer, more defined lashes and not so much a voluminous lash. Yeah, I really don't have that much to add um, other than to say I still hate the mascara. <laughs> Tried it again, don't like it, flaked everywhere. Uh, still don't like it. The primer is still okay. It's not my favorite lash primer, uh, but the mascara, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with the three in one all over sticks. And it looks like I have two different shades. I have a nude brown. Oh God, those are beautiful. I have more of a nude brown and like a nude rose. And for some reason, it doesn't give me like the name of them, but I have them in the numbers one and number two. And these are unbelievably creamy. Like, holy cow. I don't know if you can see, hold on. Let me see if I can like do it on camera. Like I'm barely applying any pressure and these are just super duper creamy. And they retail for $14 a piece. And it wasn't until just now that I remembered I was actually gonna use these <laughs> as, as like a cream blush on my face. Whoops, I guess I'll try that another day. Um, but let's go, yeah, let's just go ahead and test them out. There's really not much more we need to know. So I'm gonna go in, I think, with the nude brown because I think it'll match the eye look a little bit better. All right, so there is the lip on and applied. And let me just tell you, this is unbelievably creamy. When I say creamy, I'm talking like I did this, like one swipe, I had a tiny bit and it was just instantly all over my lips. It's like butter, velvet, it's so smooth. And I just wanna take a little bit of it and kind of, you know, just rub it into my hand here. I wanna see how this would look as a cream, like blush option. Ooh, that would actually be pretty and you could probably build it up a little. Oh, you can. Oh yes, I absolutely approve. I think that would look beautiful on the cheek. <gasps> okay, yes, all right, so this I really like. Okay, not mad at this at all. Again, that's the shade one on my lips, just a nice nude brown. And then from there, I have two of their hollow lip glosses. These are also in shades number one, which is this more like clear white one, and number two, which is more of a rosy pink. Looks like these retail for 
$10 a piece and they are available in four shades. These are both of the shades that I have. Again, this is the clear one, shade one and shade two. I think of the two, my favorite is probably this one, but with today's look, I don't really want to add the pink because I'm really trying to stick with that monochromatic effect. So I'm going to grab this one right here and I'm going to take just a tiny bit of it and like pop it right in the center just for that little, little lilt. Ooh, dear God, that smells good. It smells like a little, like a little bag of cupcakes and frosting. Oh yes, honey. I'm going to make sure too that I wipe this off. All right, you guys, that is the full face all done and complete. Let's go ahead and do our little final wrap up that we always do. And of course we will start that off with the up close. So you guys can take a look at what's going on and I will kind of tell you, you know, how, how I'm kind of perceiving things because I don't know that they always come across in camera, especially today. I don't think anything can possibly convey how bad <laughs> this foundation looks. So let's go ahead and uh, throw up the up close so we can look at it together. Together. Um, I think the main thing that's really standing out to me that I'm having a hard time with with this foundation is just how settled and dry and like crackly it looks in my skin. It just looks unbelievably unflattering. I think the problem, again, is it's more of a multifaceted problem. Number one, it doesn't have the coverage they spec it to have. It would round it out with the, the consistency of this foundation. And I say that because like normally if there's a liquid foundation, like for example, the Catrice HD Full Coverage, it's very liquid, very thin. It is also one of my top favorite foundations. And I think it's just an amazing, amazing product, but it's because the pigment that is suspended in the liquid, it's even. And in a situation like this, I think that there's a very small amount of pigment suspended in a liquid that for some reason either dries or settles out very quickly. All right, beautiful people. With that, I just wanted to stop on and let you guys know that, um, well, first of all, I'm out for this video. I mean, I know you've seen so much of me. I'm looking so glorious today. Uh, but I wanted to let you know that uh, the ending of this might seem a little awkward. So I figured I would just come on here and, you know, <laughs> make that so much better. Um, but I went in and I, I removed or deleted all of the original footage that I I had to end this video because it just occurred to me it makes no sense for me to leave that ending in when I just went through and updated you on a bunch of the stuff anyways like why would I make you watch two endings so um here I am taking place of that footage hi hello and uh finish out the video hang out in the bloopers whatever and me and my under eye bags and my velvet scrunchie well we're gonna go we're gonna go live our best life and I will see you in another video, I'm sure, very soon. Guys, that's it. That's a wrap. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Did you like this video? Was it helpful? Were you interested in this collection? You guys know the drill. Leave it all down in the comments. Um, per usual, if you haven't checked me out yet, Instagram and on Twitter, those will both be linked down in the description box. And then, of course, the big one, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do that before you leave. I do put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they go up around 7 a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. So if you'd like to have someone to hang out with on, uh, you know, every other day, Day during the work week and get your morning started. Again, please subscribe and stick around. And you guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. My ancestors sent a little lizard to help me. Hey, 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 dragon, dragon. I don't do that tongue thing. <laughs> That was a lot. My room is cleaned up. I can't tell you how long, how long in coming this, long in coming? I, don't, I feel like that's a really bad analogy. Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. It's up for, no. The look, the feel, the appeal, the color. It was just, oh, it was a hundred shades of yes, please touch me. What?